Good morning, Sister Cynthia. Good morning. Just praying. Bless your name, Jesus. Good morning, Jeffrey. The Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord this morning. Thank you for joining us for Fourth Watch 5 a.m. prayer, power prayer, and teaching. Um, we are going to just begin. Uh, 5 a.m. morning prayer ministry and just believing God as our group grows. Good morning, Yolanda. Please tag, share, invite someone to be a part of this morning's word and prayer. I absolutely believe that this is a word for somebody this morning. I absolutely believe that. Uh, as we go through Give us some smiley faces, some thumbs up, right? That's how we praise God over uh, Facebook Live. And so I absolutely believe that the word that the Lord has spoken to me um, <coughs> at 3 a.m. was um, a word for God's people. Amen. Amen. So we will, we will pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you've been. Thank you that we acknowledge, God, that we are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. you we can't breathe. We can't think. We couldn't have rose this morning lest you called our name. Lest you said, Jeffrey, wake up. Lest you said, Michelle, arise. Tracy, Hallelujah. Yolanda, Yvette, God, you called our names this morning and all those others who are, who, who are listening, who will view God, who will log on. God, you called our name this morning. There are people whose names were not called. They, they found themselves sleeping in Jesus if they're a believer, but if they're not, they, they found themselves in a place of unknown, their soul, not going to a place of where streets are paved in gold and there is an everlasting, eternal worship before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we thank you. Ha, Jesus, we thank you that our name was called this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for calling our name this morning. Thank you for calling our spouse's name this morning, our children's name this morning, our nieces and nephews, our parents, God, our brothers, our sisters, God, thank you for calling the names of those we love, God, that they will see another day, another day to worship you, another day to praise you, another day, God, that we get to get it right before you, God, we thank you. We thank you that our name was called this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. Hallelujah that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, God. And in the palm of your hand, our name is written. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your love this morning. Thank you for calling our name. Thank you that we were able to find ourselves in the land of the living. Thank you that we were able to put our feet on the ground this morning. Hallelujah, God. 
Tanika, how are you, pumpkin? Hallelujah, God. Sister Yvette, God, we thank you that we are in the land of the living, God. We thank you that we are in the land of the living to encourage someone, to speak life over someone, God, to declare someone's destiny, someone's purpose, someone's greatness. Hallelujah, to smile at somebody, to hug somebody. Glory to God. We thank you this morning. We thank you. Because you live, we can face this day, God, and we thank you. We thank you. And we love you, God. God, we ask that you set a watch over us this morning. Set a watch over my mouth, God, that I only say what you have for me to say over your people, God. That I only minister the word that you have for me to minister, God. God, let life flow. Hallelujah. Let truth flow, God. Let love flow. Let the prophetic flow this morning. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, I do hear promotion in Jesus' name. I don't know. There's two Yvettes on here, and I'm not sure if it's Yvette Johnson or the other Yvette, but I do hear promotion in the name of Jesus coming your way this morning. And if there's anybody else waiting on a promotion, go ahead and grab that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to understand that when God speaks prophetically and it's in the atmosphere, if it applies to you, even though your name wasn't called, glory to God. Hallelujah. It can apply to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tracy, I hear that there's an answer that you're waiting on. And God said it's going to come in the time that you need the answer. Hallelujah. I want to say at the end of this week, but that may be me, and I don't want to get ahead of God, but there's an answer that you're waiting on. And God said it's coming. It's coming. That answer is coming. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's coming. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word this morning. Thank you that it falls up on good ground, God. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the prophetic word. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that it has life, God. I thank you, God, that it extends across boundaries, God. It extends across airways, God. We know that the prince of the air, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you give him some level of access in this realm. But God, we take this back in the name of Jesus because we are your anointing. We are your anointed. We walk by faith and not by sight. Your spirit lives in us. It is not in him. Hallelujah, God. We walk in our authority, God. God, we speak to every financial struggle, every financial battle. God, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. The things that put fear into our hearts when it comes. Hallelujah, God. Garnishments, God. On people's checks. In the name of Jesus, God. We say, stop it, God. Let them, God, in the name of Jesus, God. That person that is uh, uh, putting putting pressure on someone's finances, God, to pay something back, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we pray that they allow them to work out a reasonable payment in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, you said if we bring our tithes into the storehouse, God, you promised that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake. So anyone, God, we made bad decisions. There's some things we didn't know how to do with our finances, but God, we repent right now. Somebody repent, repent, repent. Lord, forgive me. Change my mind about money, oh God. Change my mind about, hallelujah, God, the resources that you bring into my life, oh God. Let me save. Let me uh, let me invest, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, I will bring my tithe, God. I will sow my offering, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Now, God, you have promised to rebuke the devourer. Now, God, we ask you to get to moving to rebuke, rebuking the IRS, rebuking God, the person who's coming to garnish people's checks, uh, rebuking, oh God, the person who's been looking for a job, but they can't find a job. Oh God, they need their finances to move, oh God. Oh God, we know that it's not all about money. Hallelujah. We're not lovers of money, but we know that money as answers many of things. So God, we need, we need our finances to be right. God, help us to make the right decisions. God, hallelujah. With what you give us, it's not our money. It's your money. Hallelujah. It's not ours. It's yours. Hallelujah. So God, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We thank you, God. 
We love you, God. Now download your truth. Download your wisdom. God, download your love. God, download your comfort, oh God. Let it rest upon somebody this morning. Let your peace rest upon them, on their mind, oh God, on their heart, oh God, on their emotions, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. Let it rest upon their appetites this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, God, that we make better decisions, God, with the things concerning the things that we desire, oh God. Oh Lord, we love you this this morning. We bless your name this morning. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. You are magnificent and holy. Hallelujah. You are lovely. Hallelujah. You are beautiful, oh God. Your majesty rules and reigns over our lives. You are king and you are Lord. Hallelujah. You answereth all things, oh God. You are the great I am, oh God. You are mighty. You are all wise. You are all knowing. Hallelujah. You are the healer and the provider. You are the lover of our souls, oh God. You are the creator of all things, oh God. You are there and you are there and you are over there, oh God. Thank you for being here, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless your holy name, oh God. You are righteous, oh God, and it is because of you that we are called the righteousness of God, Jesus. Thank you for living in us. Thank you for dwelling in us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb this morning. Blessed be the name of our God, oh God. God. We thank you, God, for those who share, for those who tag, for those who like, for those who send up happy faces and smiles, oh God. In your presence, we praise you, for there is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures and pleasures and pleasures. Hallelujah forevermore. Oh God, we thank you this morning for who you are, oh God. You are worthy to be praised. Oh God, we lift up our children this morning. I lift up my nieces and my nephews, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, Shireen and Shannon. Oh, call out your children's names. Call out those you love. Call out those you've been praying for. Oh God, we thank you. Jerome and Christine. Oh, Christina, oh God. Malcolm and Tara, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for healing Jordan. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Thank you and bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah, Simone and Sarah and Sophia. Hallelujah, Sydney and baby Shannon. Harper, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Jared, Gerard, Joshua, and Karen. Oh God, I call out my grandchildren, my, my God children, oh God. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, bless your name this morning. My brothers, my sisters, my mother, oh God. Hallelujah. God, my sister-in-law, oh God, hallelujah, God, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice, I pray your encouragement, and I pray your strength, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, you are a keeper, and you are God, and you are Lord, oh God, we thank you, and we bless your name this morning, your word is already blessed, God, as we go into 2 Kings, hallelujah, chapter 20, I pray for their hearts, oh God, I pray that their hearts be pliable. Hallelujah. Yes, God. We come in agreement, God. Jordan and Jaden, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name this morning. I bless your name. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Head of Oshana de Rosa, ha. Manna na nero de Rosa, ba ha. Ya de Rosa, ha. Tamana na 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 na. Shed or also bo 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 sha, ha. Ha, ya de Rosa. The blood over our children. The blood over their schools, the blood over the corridors and the hallways, their buses, hallelujah. The bus stop, the blood, the Holy Spirit meets them there, protects them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every child with special needs, oh God. The persons assigned to care for them will care for them rightly. Hallelujah, no hurt, no harm, no danger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Caleb and Kennedy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Hoosier children, God. Asian Amber, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Second Kings chapter 20. 
Glory, 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 glory. Let your glory fall this morning. Ah. Second Kings chapter 20. Go with me, go with me, go with me. Please share, tag. Like, send up some smiley faces. Let this word go out across Facebook Live to your friends, to your family. Let somebody know. Hey, Sissy Brenda, glory to your name. I love my family. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. The word of the Lord says, Sometime later, Hezekiah, whose name means God is my strength, became deathly ill. The prophet Isaiah paid him a visit and said, put your affairs in order. God sent Isaiah the prophet to tell, to tell uh, Hezekiah, whose name means God is my strength. Uh, get your stuff in order. Get your stuff in order because you gonna die. You gonna die. That, it got real right there, didn't it? Didn't it get real? Hallelujah. Anybody ever, something come into your life and it gets real? Hallelujah. It gets real right there. So somebody comes and you get that pink slip, it gets real. Somebody comes and tells you you have a diagnosis, it gets real. Hallelujah. And they come and deliver that message, a doctor, you get a notice in the mail, you get a phone call, call your doctor's office, your test results are in. It gets real. It gets real at that moment. He said, put your affairs in order because you're about to die. You don't, you don't have long to live at all. You, you ain't got long to live. So get some stuff in order. Well, you know, the saying is, people say, give people their flowers while they're alive. Well, I encourage us to get our affairs in order. Get our affairs in order now before somebody has to come and deliver us a message. Glory to God. So let's get it in order. Let's get it in order. It's got real. It's gotten real in our government. It's gotten real in our schools and in our neighborhoods and our cities. It's gotten real. And when it gets real, there's something you got to do. When it gets real, there's something you got to do. Hallelujah. So let, let Isaiah let, let Isaiah and Hezekiah minister to us this morning. What is it? Somebody asked me, what is it that I need to do when it gets real? Well, here we go. It's in scripture. Hezekiah turns from Isaiah. Before he even leaves the room, he turns, he turns, he turns. He turns and the Bible says he puts his face to the wall. I said, Lord. Why did he put his face to the wall? Why did he why did he put his face to the wall? And the Lord said, because Hezekiah didn't want to be distracted. When it gets real, you, you can't be distracted. When God speaks to you about something he would have for you to do in your life that's concerning your purpose and your destiny, it gets real. It gets real. It gets real. And you got to turn from all the distractions. You got to put them out. I don't care who in the room. It could be prophet. Yeah, 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 ta, 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 they hit every prophecy right. But you got to turn from them. This was Isaiah. He could have grabbed Isaiah's hands and said, man of God, prophet who hears all and knows all and God speaks to you and he just sent you here with a message. Pray with me. That's what he could have did. That's what Isaiah could, that's what Hezekiah could do. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't turn to a man. He didn't turn to the pastor. Pastor, I need you to pray for me. He didn't go to the intercessors. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He didn't even go seek the elders because the word says that if you go to the elders and confess your sins, God is faithful to heal you. He will hear you and heal you. Well, Hezekiah didn't do that. Hezekiah didn't turn to Isaiah and say, can we touch and agree? Can you pray for me? No, he didn't do that. He turned his face. To the wall. He got in a corner. He got in a space and in a place that said, God, if you don't do this, this cannot get done because it got real. It just got real. You just told me to get my affairs in order. I heard the man of God. Let me say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What is this that people only want to hear the good word from the prophet? You're going to get a car. You're going to get a house. Your husband coming. Your wife coming. You're going to get some money. A check in the mail. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It ain't always going to be. We understand the dispensation of grace. I get that. I get that the prophetic gift is used to encourage, to strengthen, hallelujah, to bring instruction. I get all that. I know what Corinthians says. But there is a word that comes from the prophet 
that always ain't going to be nice. The word that comes that says, get your stuff in order. Get up out that man's bed. Leave that woman alone. She is not your wife. Yeah, I said it. Go home and take care of your kids. Pay your child support. Lest God causes your job to end. Yeah, it's them kind of words that can come from the prophetic voice, from the prophet. Yeah, we get all the good stuff too. But, but what is this age in the church if you believe the word of the prophet? Because that's what the scripture says. You'll get the prophet's reward. So that's whether the prophet is bringing a good word, glory to God, for the good word. But what about the word that says, get your stuff in order? See, if I was a cursing woman, I would say something else. I ain't never been a big cursing woman. Amen. And as a woman of God, that ain't what I want to do this morning. Hallelujah. But God needs for us to understand the word of the Lord ain't always going to be soft and, and rubby and touchy-feely. No, 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 no. Get it together. Get it together. So he came. Isaiah came and he told Hezekiah, get your stuff in order. And Hezekiah didn't waste no time. So what do you do when it gets real? You ain't got no time to waste. That's the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is recognize I, there's a limitation on my life. I ain't got time to waste. I'm going to turn from my sins. I'm going to turn from this thing. And I'm going to repent. And I'm going to put my face in the direction of God. And I'm going to shut everything else out so that I can hear the Lord. And so this is what Hezekiah does. This is what he does. He prays. The first thing, the second thing you must do is pray. You got to shut out the distractions when it gets real. Some of you got real stuff going on. You got kid problems, marriage problems, relationship problems, parent problems. You and your mama don't get along. You don't know where your daddy at. Or you won't get along with him. Your finances jacked up. You're trying to get your credit right. You want a house. You want to move out of that person's house. You need a car. You need one because you're tired of taking the bus. It's getting ready to get cold. You need a vehicle. You ain't looking for nothing fancy. It got real. The car you got got repossessed. You got a note or a call from the doctor. It got real. Your husband told you. Your wife told you I want a divorce. It got real. So what do you do? You put the distractions out. Put the distractions out. And you turn your face to focus on God. You put your face on the floor to focus on God. You turn off everything and, and tune out everything. You give the kids some money to go to, to, to a friend's house <coughs> for somebody to watch them because it got real. While they're at school and you maybe you need to take a day off from work because it got real. Preferably, you still get paid. Maybe you need to take one of them vacation mornings or afternoons and just get in the presence of the Lord because it's gotten real. You need to know what's my next step. What's my next move? What is it that I need to do? Lord, what are you saying to me? It got real. It's gotten real. So Hezekiah turned his face and he prayed. And this is what he prayed. Please remember me. Oh, God. That's what he said. Please <coughs> remember me. Oh, God. Does that sound familiar? Around about Luke 23. When the thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. Ah, there's a power in the law of called. It's called biblically the law of first mention. When God says something, the first time he says it, what was he trying to accomplish the first time he said it in scripture? Here, the first time we read that a man, in this case, a man of God in the scripture says, remember me, oh God, remember me, remember me. What was God speaking? Why, why did that person say that to God? Because they were desperate. In desperate situations, you need to ask God to remember you. No, we get it. We don't deserve anything in the natural sense of our flesh because we're human and we're flawed and we know we are dust going back to dust and we are sinful by nature. But by the grace of God, we have been saved. So let me just drop this right here. Y'all ready? 
Stop saying I'm a sinner. Stop it. Stop it. You are not a sinner. If you are a believer, you are a you were a sinner who has been saved by grace. And now you are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. Stop saying I'm a sinner. No, I was a sinner saved by grace. To be a sinner means that you live a life daily of sin. Well, I guess maybe if you shacking and you stand with somebody you ain't married to and y'all having sex. Okay, maybe, maybe, okay. If you just constantly going around lying and stealing and cheating and having a stank, nasty attitude and walking in pride every day, you will never say, I'm sorry. You don't never ask God to help you, Donald Trump. Sorry, I had to drop that in there because, you know, anyway. You have no heart of repentance to ask for forgiveness. Maybe. But a true believer in Jesus Christ who's been saved, yeah, he's going to ask or she's going to ask, Lord, forgive me. Help me. I don't want to keep doing this. I know this is against your will. God, give me strength. Help me to help me to be walking the spirit and be led by the spirit. Fill me, God. Give me clean hands. Give me a pure heart. That's what you're going to do. And if you're doing that, then you're not a sinner. You were a sinner who's been saved by grace. And now. You are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. This is why the word says that you might be called. You got to choose to be called the righteousness of God. So make a choice today. Are you the righteousness of God? Put it on there. Yes, I am. I am the righteousness of God. And so because you are, you can pray like Hezekiah. You can pray. Hallelujah. You can pray. Like the pigs who ask God for something in Matthew chapter 8. You can pray. Hallelujah. Like King Cyprus in Isaiah 23. You can pray. He, was a, he wasn't even a, a believing king. Jesus, pigs were pigs. And the demon said, send me into the pigs. Come on now. You're the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. You are a child of God. You can ask for what you will. Lord, please remember me. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, remember me. Remember me. Good God Almighty. Hezekiah said, oh, God, remember who I am. Remember what I've done for you, how I've done this and how I've done that. And to really get a handle on what, who Hezekiah was, you got to start in about Isaiah chapter uh, 18, about at chapter 18 through 20. Then there's uh, uh, some more over in Isaiah 38 that talks about who Hezekiah was and what Hezekiah did. But the Bible says he was a righteous king. Huh? He was, he was favored, a favored king in God's eyes. So he started listing. Hey, hey, now wait a minute here. Wait a minute. You done told me my life is ending. I done got some bad news. It didn't got real. Come on. Y'all know. Hey, God, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, what Hezekiah did not do was ask, why, Lord, why you let this happen? Why is this happening to me? Lord, ain't none. God ain't tripping. Let me say this. God is not tripping on you asking why. You will probably hear me say this on many a Tuesday morning on Fourth Watch Prayer. God is not tripping on you asking why. You know why he's not tripping on you asking why? Because Jesus asked why. Lord, somebody finish it for me. Why hast thou forsaken me? That's what he said. But when Jesus got, now let's be clear. God didn't answer Jesus. He, he didn't say nothing. So Jesus' next response was, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Now hear me. All of that is the truth. Because it's the word. But you still have a right. To ask God for what you want. Hi, that's good news this morning. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. However, God, Lord, please remember me. Remember what I've done. My work's not done here yet. I still need to do this. I want to see my children raised. I, I will raise them. Come on, y'all. We got it. Jesus. Yes, we got to get like the, the woman in the word who said, I'll raise, I'll raise him. I'll raise Samuel. I'll take him to church. I'll do what you said. Lord, help me when I'm weak to still obey you. Help me to do the right thing. The Bible says that Hezekiah obeyed every word of 
the Lord that came through Moses. So every, every law, Lord have mercy. Give me the strength. Hallelujah. Before the day is out that I don't miss it. So he says, God, remember me. He said, I've lived an honest life before you. My heart has been true. My heart has been steady. He said, I've lived to please you. If you live in the please, God, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it on occasion. But if you if you live in the please, if your desire is to please, I'll never forget my previous pastor said, God counts the times that you get it right. He counts the times that you could have cussed them out and you didn't. <laughs> He counts the times that you could have fornicated and had sex with that brother, that sister. And you was like, no, nah, Lord, help me. Let me let me run. Hallelujah. Like Joseph did. Let me get up out of here. Hallelujah. Because she's smelling good and she all soft and caramely and chocolatey. And he all stretched wide with 42 and a little bit of pack in there. Six, four pack, something, you know, smelling good. Salt and pepper, nice shade, breath good. Oh, my God. Yes. But I just escaped. I didn't. He honors the times that you did not give in. And you should celebrate when you did not give in to that temptation and to that sin that you know in the past you would have gave up the ghost, the panties, the pants, the check. I said it. So Ezekiah said, Isaiah, as the Lord stops Isaiah, as, as Hezekiah is praying and weeping before him. And the Bible says he didn't even get to the middle court. So we know how it was it was built. So there was um, there was the outer court where the folk live. Then there was the inner court, and then there was the the holy of holies. The Bible says he didn't even get because that's even in how they built the city. That's how it was built. So he didn't even get outside really. <laughs> he didn't get outside of Hezekiah's court before he turned around and God said, go back. Anybody need God? Anybody need God to tell somebody to go back and check again? Go back and check again. You know what? We denied them that house. But somebody done, done an audit at the bank that you applied for that house for, that you applied for that loan for, and they going to go back and they going to look and say, you know what? Y'all was supposed to give them this house. Somebody calculated this wrong. Hear me. Somebody needs somebody to go back and look at your test results again. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what we thought it was. Oh, my God. There's another kind of phone call that's going to come your way. You know what? We calculated that wrong. You really don't owe that much. Wow. Somehow somebody miscalculated. You don't owe that much. Somebody needs somebody needs God today. To send someone back around and send them back to you with a different answer, with a better answer. Hallelujah. With the answer that comes with the favor of the Lord because you are the righteousness of God. And when it got real, you did what you needed to do. You shut things down. You turned to God and you didn't turn to man. And it ain't nothing wrong. I just taught last week on the power of agreement where two or three are touching in the earth agreeing upon anything. That God, Jesus has promised to be in the midst of it and that God would hear our prayer and would come to our need. But sometimes we run into other people to agree with us before we've gotten in the presence of God and ask God by faith and believed and believed that God has heard our prayers. If your heart, the Bible says, does not condemn you, you can ask for whatever you want. Hallelujah. So. Here we are. We're back in. We're back in Second uh, Kings chapter twenty, and we're about about in verse six. Uh, about in verse six, and so <clears throat> God turns Hezekiah around and uh, turns Isaiah around and go tells Hezekiah, "Hold up, hold up." God's word says, "I've heard your prayers. I've heard you. I listened." He didn't just hear; he listened. He had an ear to hear. He listened. To hear what God was, okay, so this is what God, God hurt you. He hurt you. And now, he has an answer. God says, this is what I'm going to do for you, Hezekiah. This is what I'm going to do for you. He said, I will extend your life for 15 years. I am going to add 15 years to your life. Now, let me help you about the number 15. The number 15 represents deliverance. The number 15 represents breakthrough. 
<laughs> Glory to God, the number 15 represents freedom. See, I get excited about the numbers of God. Those that have prophetic meanings, every number does not have a prophetic meaning. Like 17 does not have a prophetic meaning. So anybody tell you it does, it doesn't. Okay. We can put 10 and 7 together, I guess. Uh, but 15 has a prophetic meaning. Grace upon grace upon grace. Grace and mercy is over your life, Hezekiah. See, this is the thing that excites me. My birthday is May 5th, 1967. So when the Lord showed me that my life is grace upon grace and that goodness and mercy has followed me all the days of my life, this is why, you know, in my raggediness, it was never about me. It was never about me. I was born into grace. And that is the only reason I've been kept. Then I had the nerve to get saved. Good God Almighty. I had the nerve to find this God whose name and very existence carries and exudes grace and mercy. And now, goodness and mercy? Hey, Darwin Hobbs is singing that song right at that moment. Hallelujah. For your grace. Yes, God. Yes, God. Great is your mercy towards me. Thank you, Darwin Hobbs. Perfect timing of God. So, here's Hezekiah getting a return word from the Lord that your life has been extended 15 years. So, so Hezekiah, and this is the thing, what you have to understand. When it gets real and you shut everything down, and you put your face towards God, to the wall, to the floor. You put everybody out and you say, I got I to gotta hear the Lord. I got to know what's going on. What's going on? Why is all of this happening? God, speak to me. And it gives you a confidence. It gives you a boldness in God. And in this case, God turns the man of God around, goes back to Hezekiah, tells him what the Lord says. Now, because of this relationship that Hezekiah has with God, this confidence that he has, that if he asks whatsoever he will, he trusts that God will hear and he will do. And this is what the word says. That God heard him and God said, I will answer. Hezekiah is so bold in his relationship and his confidence with God that he literally says, okay, so how will I know that God's going to do what he said, that he's going to give me 15 years? And let's be clear, God sends Hezekiah with a word that says, I'm going to extend your life and I am going to save you from your enemy. Oh, God, that's good. He said, I'm going to save your life and I'm going to save you from your enemy and I'm going to cover your city as a shield. I'm going to cover where you live. I'm going to cover where you reside. See, when it gets real and your prayer gets real and you get honest with God and stop trying to pray all pretty and cry out to God, Lord, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Good God Almighty, I need you. Lord, this ain't right. I don't like it. I need more time. I need, I need my money right. I need them to get out my check. I need them to quit messing with my bank account. Lord, I need you. I need my marriage to work. I'm tired of being single. Get real. Because all that stuff y'all out there doing as single people, you out of order. Maybe that's why God ain't sent them. It might just not be time. That's cool, too. Particularly if you wait right, the issue just may be the timing of the Lord. But you crying out for the one, but you doing everything you ain't supposed to do. Maybe your marriage ain't right because you don't know how to shut your mouth. You don't know how to talk to your wife. You don't know how to be still in front of your husband. Maybe that's why your marriage struggling. Maybe because you stubborn. Maybe because you think you a know-it-all. Ain't nothing wrong with knowing it all. But just sometimes act like you don't know, right? Amen. Amen. Maybe that's why. There's some reasons. There's typically a reason. But God has promised when it gets real, somebody, your spouse, didn't ask you for a divorce. Maybe you need to pray. Maybe you need to fast. Maybe you need to take their hand. Maybe you need to say, I'm sorry. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. What is it? Maybe you need to put everybody else out of your marriage and your relationship. And y'all, the both of you, turn to God. God, help us. Good God Almighty. So what is it? The Bible says 
that because Hezekiah did what was necessary when it got real, he shut it down. He turned to God. He prayed. He was real with God. He asked God. He reminded God. It ain't about being arrogant. It's not about being cocky. God said, put me in remembrance of my word. And the, if you, the things you've done are for God, for his glory to please him, God, listen, remember, let, let me tell y'all a real quick story. Real quick story. My nephew, Jerome, Jordan, help me, Lord Jesus. My nephew, Jordan, the healed, uh, is diagnosed with autism. He's 25 now. And about 11 years ago, maybe, Jordan started wandering off. Um, a lot of times, autistic children will do something that's called eloping, where they'll run, they'll run off. And um, I had gone on a sabbatical. So, gosh, maybe it was 15 years ago. Maybe it was 15 years ago. I had gone on a sabbatical. And while I, so I went on this sabbatical, whatever part of Indiana it was. And so that was in January. And this was about March. It popped on the news uh, on a Sunday. No, yeah, a Sunday morning that a young boy had come up missing. Uh, Sunday evening, Sunday evening, a, a, a young boy, his name was um, David Samuel. That was his name, David Samuel. I still remember it. And he had come up missing. And the parents were, you know, of course, crying on the news. They're looking all around the neighborhood. About 11 o'clock at night, the Holy Spirit told me to call Channel 13 to get the address for where they live. They could, the parents, they couldn't give me the address legally, but they told me, the part of, of Indiana, and it wasn't too far, maybe 30 minutes away, but it happened to be where I was at on my sabbatical. It was that same uh, part of the city. And because of that, I knew where I was going. So I headed that way, but I didn't know where the house was. So I stopped at a convenience store, a, a gas station convenience store. Don't leave me because this is going to bless you. So when I stopped in there... Um, there were some fire. I asked the attendant if they knew where the house was. They said no. Then some firemen came in. And as the firemen came in, I said, listen, I drove from Indianapolis. The Lord has instructed me to go pray for the family. And I don't know where they live. They said, oh, this is where they live. We just left there. They told me how to get there. So while I was in the store, I was led to buy Skittles and goldfish. I know. You're like, what? Why? And the Holy Spirit, I was like, I was led to buy them. And in my mind, I thought, okay, so if I find him, I'll give these to him. So I headed to the housing edition. I get to the housing edition. Uh, police are everywhere. They have it blocked off. I said, listen, I'm here. Uh, I've driven in from Indianapolis. God is, it's about midnight now. God has told me to go pray for the family. One of the police officers was like, no, no, we don't want anybody. This lady was like, police officer, she was like, no, come on, ma'am, come on. So she leads me to the house. I walk in the house. I tell the family the same thing. I'm here to pray with you. I don't know your son. I don't know you. And may I pray? And of course, they're like, sure, they're Caucasian. I'm black. I'm the only black thing in the room. I said, listen. If I see, find you, I said, and, and the Lord instructed me, I said, don't think this is weird, but God instructed me to get Skittles and goldfish. The mother just started bawling. I, I'm talking to you about how when you are obedient to God and you do what God says because it's gotten real, that God will speak to you. He will speak to you and he will bless you to be used to bless other people. So. The mother just starts bawling. She said, how did you know he likes Skittles and goldfish? I said, I didn't, but God told me to get it. And, and so I'm here. Because of that, that made the way receptive for them to allow me to pray. So I prayed. But as I prayed, as I prayed, I knew that David Samuel was no longer with us. Of course, I couldn't tell the parents that. I asked the parents, I said, is there a black fence somewhere around where he's at? And they was like, yes, where we, where we were, there's a fence around the yard. It's a black, yes, it's a black fence. And I said, okay, amen. I said, is there um, water near there? They was like, yeah, right behind it. I knew. 
I knew that Samuel was no longer with us. But of course, I did not tell the parents that. Let me restate that. I didn't know, but my spirit was quickened to that. And I honestly kept trying to reject it. I drove around the complex. Finally, I decided to leave. It was probably about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And there was a policeman there. I said, officer, um, are you guys going to check the pond behind the house? I said, out here, are you going to check the ponds out here? He said, yes, we're going to do that first dawn. I said, amen. As I drove off, I prayed and I prayed believing that God would, David Samuel would be well. But as I drove off, what quickened in my spirit, I knew. Monday morning, I awoke. And between the Today Show that comes on at 7, I was an avid watcher of the day, Today Show at that time. They chime in, Channel 13, and says that they had just drained, swept the pond, and they found David Samuel in the retention pond behind the house that had the black fence. When it gets real, beloved, you have to pray. When it gets real, you have to know who your God is. When it gets real, you got to shut everybody out and you got to obey God. I don't care who's around. Whatever assignment he sends you on, you have to be obedient to do what God says. It may look crazy to everybody else, but when you know that you know that what you are doing is what God has told you to do, be confident that God will give you an answer. I had wrote the address down when I left the house. And I, I wrote those parents back and I said to them, I believe that this is what the Lord had showed me. That because David Samuel was drawn to water, my Jordan, our Jordan, ain't drawn to no big bodies of water. He take a shower, he brush his teeth, he wash dishes, but that's it. I said, I believe that David Samuel rested in that water. It was a peace for him. It was a rest. Because we, if we are drowning, we're going to fight it. We're going to fight the water. But David Samuel didn't have the understanding to do that. So he rested in it. I said, be comforted that your child did not struggle. He didn't drown the way that we know drowning. So as it relates to this scripture in First Sam, in 2 Kings chapter 20, the Bible says that God told Hezekiah, I'm going to save you. I'm going to provide you extended life. He said, I'm going to save you from your enemy. And I'm going to save the city that you in, where you live, where you dwell. The people who are in your city that are your loved ones. Because you were bold enough to turn to me and to ask me for what you wanted. I shared that because that was March. June, July, our Jordan started running off and eloping. And he did it several times. He did it probably about four or five times. And every single time, God allowed Jordan to be found. Jordan was miles away, literally, at least three miles away. Three to five miles away. He was had gone to into a housing complex. He did that twice, I think, once. He was headed... Y'all, those who live in Indianapolis, just, just clap me up when I'm about to tell you what this young man did at back that time, like 11, 12, 10, 11, 12. He, we live at 71st and Michigan World, 62nd and Cooper. Jordan was headed to Market Square Arena on a Sunday morning because that was July and Easter Star was having church. That was him and his mama's church. And so he was ready to go hear Pastor Johnson preach. That he got up, ready, and had left the house. At that time, we didn't have alarms. Somebody who just know how far that is. And he had made it from 71st in Michigan, 62nd in Cooper, to Lafayette Square Mall, which is at 38th in Lafayette. He had made it from 62nd Street to 38th. And God kept him. A, a boy diagnosed with autism, he crossed streets. Don't know nothing about waiting at no light. God kept our baby. God kept him when he left from 71st and 62nd and Cooper and headed up Michigan Road towards 86th Street and got to 79th Street. God kept him. This is what God will 
do. When you do, because I sold in obedience to that family in another city for their autistic child, even though God allowed him to go on to glory, but I was there for them to pray for them. God kept our child. God kept my nephew. And he has continued to keep him. One time he, he was headed to, uh, <laughs> he was going to the mall to see his auntie. He was like, I'm going to, I'm going to Sears. We God, when it gets real, when it gets real, you have to shut everything out, everybody out, and you got to get before God. You got to turn your face to God and ask God for what you want. You need peace? Ask him for it. You need reconciliation? Ask him for it. You need healing? Ask him for it. Now in Hezekiah's place, God did it. And he extended his life 15 years. Somebody could say, well, why didn't he extend it uh, another 50 years, another 25? Because he's God and he's sovereign. And he can do what he want. You better be glad you got 15. Glory to God. And your city was saved. And I kept you from your enemies. That's a lot right there. God said Hezekiah lived in peace the rest of his life. You need peace. Just ask God for that. Listen. The Bible says that Isaiah took some fig leaves. He said, he said, so Isaiah then said, prepare a pastry that has fig leaves in it. God will make you participate in your miracle. See, God just could have healed Hezekiah. But the man of God, the prophet said, okay, so God's going to extend your 15 years. He's going to protect your city, your family. You're going to keep you from your enemies. He said, but you got to participate. You got to participate. So Isaiah made Hezekiah go get the fig leaves and help prepare this pastry that he was going to put on Hezekiah's wounds. So the Bible says they prepared the plaster or pastry. And applied it to Hezekiah's boils. And the Bible says that at that moment, Hezekiah was on his way to recovery. When you participate in your deliverance, in your breakthrough, in your miracle, you already on your way. The moment you started praying, I always come back to that scripture. The moment he started praying, the Bible says in Ezekiel, Daniel, he said his answer was on the way. The moment he started praying, the moment you asked God by faith, believing, Hezekiah was so bold to do that, he didn't question, well, God, did you hear me? Now, we're going to get to this text in just a minute, because we only got about eight minutes, and we're going to shut this down, that Hezekiah did ask God a question. He did ask him a question. He didn't ask him a question because he didn't believe. He just wanted to be sure. Quit. Telling people you can't ask God a question. Yes, you can. Jesus did. What? Hallelujah. Cyprus asked a question. A, guy, a, a king who didn't even believe in God. I'm going to talk about that one day. Maybe next week. When everybody talking about number 45 is like King Cyrus. I keep saying Cyprus. King Cyrus. No, he's not. We're going to touch on that next week. So, why fig? Why fig? Why did God have Isaiah tell Hezekiah to use fig. Well, fig symbolizes life. It is symbolic of prosperity. Everybody going to go out and get some fig news. <laughs> it is representative of peace and righteousness that you might be called the righteousness of God. You are a, like a tree planted besides the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. A fig tree, an oak tree. Whatever you are, you bring forth your fruit consistently, a fig, in its season. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. Yeah, be like a fig tree. Be like a fig tree. And so they put this fig on the womb. And so this is what Hezekiah says to God. He says, God, he says, Isaiah, how will I know that what you have said God will do. Now listen, it wasn't so much that he was questioning if God will do it. How do I know what you saying God's going to do? God's going to do. You saying it. God ain't spoke to me. I know he's speaking to me through you. 
But this is why I tell you, and we're going we gonna to teach on the prophetic here uh, on these Tuesday mornings. It's, so, it's okay to, to question the prophet, the prophetic word. How will I know this will happen? And if it's God's will for the prophet to give you a timeline or a way, he will. But if nothing else, you can go back into your prayer closet and say, Now, Lord, the prophet said, the prophet has said that I'm going to get a promotion. One of you events that was on here, that's what the Lord said early on. Tracy, God said to you earlier as we were entering into the call that um, um, there was an answer that was coming to you. So go back and ask God. Now, did I forget? Because it may not be quickened in your spirit. Did I put a petition before the Lord? And I'm waiting. No, ask him, God, what is it that, that the prophet is talking about? Or you may know and say, now, Lord, I agree with what they're saying. And Lord, I accept that like Yvette uh, Johnson did. I receive that. Hallelujah. Come into agreement with what the prophet is saying and you will get the prophet's reward. And you got to keep fostering the prophetic word. You got to keep speaking the prophetic word. Write them down so you can go back and revisit them on, a, on an occasion and declare them over your life. So he asked God, he asked Isaiah, how will I know? So this is what, this is what Isaiah said. And we're going to wrap it up. We're going to shut it down. He says, he says, this is how you know. He said, um, he said, I'm going to give you a choice. God will give you a choice. When you have a relationship with him, he will give you a choice. Okay, he'll give you a choice. He said, so you have a choice. The shadow can go forward 10 steps or the shadow can come back 10 steps. You choose. Which ones do you want, Isaiah? Which one do you want, Hezekiah? How do you want God to show this to you? People tell you don't fleece God, don't ask God. Uh, God ain't tripping. Okay, so Isaiah says, okay, God, he needs, he needs a sign. He needs some assurance that you're going to do what you said. So Hezekiah says, you know what? For a shadow to go up 10 paces, that's normal because the sun is constantly rotating. So that's just natural. He said, I want it to go back 10. <laughs> Put a challenge before God this morning. Show me, Lord. Show me. Show me that this thing going to happen. Show me that I'm going to be married. Show me, God, that I'm going to be healed. Show me, God, that I'm going to be wealthy. Show me that I'm going to be a millionaire. Show me. Show me. God might come to you and say, how you want me to show you? He might come into a dream. Be ready. Be ready to, to tell him, this is how I need to know. Show me that my marriage is going to be restored. Show me. Show me. I need you to show me that. Show me that my child is going to come home. Show me. God will give you a choice. He gave Hezekiah a choice in 2 Kings chapter 20. Show me. Show me. It ain't even about being cocky. It's just like, Lord, I need to know that my situation is desperate. I thank you for the promise of giving me 15 more years. I thank you, God, that you're going to keep me from my enemies. You're going to keep me safe and you're going to grant me peace for these next 15 years. I thank you, Lord, that the city and the place where I dwell and the place where I live and my family is going to be good. But God, the man of God came and told me this. Now, I need to know that this was you who said this and not him. This one prophet is Tate. This one elder Tate. This one minister Tate. This one pastor such and such or prophet such and such and so. I need to know that you spoke to them, through them, to me, for me. So I can live at peace and at rest. See, the difference between Hezekiah's word and Abraham's word was that God came directly to Abraham. So he didn't have to say, God, how will I know? When a word is sent to you through a vessel of God, if your spirit is not immediately quickened, which tells me it was good news for Isaiah, right? That was good news. But he was like, wait a minute, I need to know if this is God. Because I ain't getting ready to get happy and shout and shout myself about my clothes and run around the church and fall out and be slain. And somebody got to get me up and throw a cloth over me. And I ain't sure if this was God. I ain't going to be moved by emotions. I need to know. That this is a word from the Lord because when it's a word from the Lord, I can stand on it. When it don't, when everything else around me looks crazy, when my marriage is still falling apart and he's still talking crazy to me, when he's when he's still blowing the money, when he still ain't coming home, when he's still cheating, when she still got a bad attitude, when she's still depressed, when she still won't have sex with me, Lord. 
I'm trying to keep myself. I ain't going to go out here and cheat. But Lord, I need to know that you're going to restore this marriage. When I still got to go to the doctor. When I still got to get chemo treatments. When my hair is still coming out. When my breast is still hard. When I'm still not able to birth children. I got to know. I got to be confident. I got to be confident that this was you, Lord. So Lord, give me a sign. I feel that for somebody this morning. You need a sign. You need a sign. And I come in agreement with I know, I know you've been praying a long time. I know you have. I know you've been asking God, but Lord, we come in agreement. We come in agreement this morning for the person who needs a sign so they can be encouraged, so that they can trust you again, your people, oh God. We come into agreement this morning for the answered prayer of your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need him. You need him. You need him. Y'all better quit jumping off because this thing spirals because y'all missing something. You need to stay on. Just wait on the Lord. It's going to come back around. See, that's the problem. Y'all move too quick. You move too quick. God, I come in agreement with Michelle Mattingly. God, send the sign that her prayers have been heard and that you will answer. And when you do it, God, not only do the thing that she's asked for, but God, be a blessing to her business, to her family, to her health, God. Hallelujah, God, to the surroundings where her business is. Open up other opportunities, Lord. Lord, send her a sign. I come in agreement with her this morning. That a sign will come. Hallelujah, God. She turns her face. We got to do what Hezekiah did. See, I'm symbolic. I believe if it's in the word, I'm going to do it. All I need is a word. All I need is an example in God's word. What is it that I'm going to do? Shut everybody out. Shut them out. Put them out. Go send them on a little excursion or something. Take off the morning. Take the morning off so you can seek God and the house is empty. Put your face on the floor. Put it towards the wall. Go take a drive and sit in a park and just look at the water and pray. Lord, I need a sign. I come in agreement with Sister Sheree. I come in agreement. Send the sign, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Do it, Lord. Because it's just got real. The things we are dealing with, the things we are struggling with, the things we need answers for, it's real. It's real. Send a sign of the healing and of the answer, of the recovery, of the restoration. Remember, he got 15 years, and I told you, 15 means the number of breakthrough, the number of deliverance, the number of freedom. Ask God for your breakthrough. Ask him for your deliverance. Ask him for your freedom. I come in, I say right now, free me of these cursed student loans. Good God Almighty. Jesus, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need a sign. I need a sign that, that my camels are coming, that my horses are on the way. I need a sign. Hallelujah. Because when you get a sign, you can have peace. You can be like Abraham and you can hope against hope. For 25 years, he hoped against hope. I'm not claiming that for any of you. But I'm coming in agreement that God will send you a sign. God will send you a sign that your prayers are going to be answered. I come into agreement with Carla. Send the sign in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. The Bible says that Isaiah called out to the Lord. And the thing that Hezekiah asked for, he had, he had a choice. How God would send the sign. Listen, you need a sign? God, Hezekiah, because of his relationship with God, he could ask God for how he want the sign sent. Ask God for, hey, that's a word right there. Ask God for how you want the sign sent. Lord, I need it sent this way. <laughs> I need that person to call. I need that thing to happen like this. Isaiah gave Hezekiah a choice. Do you want it like this or do you want it like that? Hezekiah said, this is how I want to know that God is going to do what he said. And God granted it. 
Isn't it wonderful to have a relationship with a living God who hears your prayers? That's awesome. This is what we have with a living God. Everybody ain't got that. They worship in Buddha. We're going to get our nails done and our lashes snatched and our brows, all of that. And they got a statue in there with an orange in front of it. He can't eat that orange. He can't drink that little liquid they got in there. But our God is real and he's alive. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He hears your prayers. And so, ask him for the sign that you need because it's gotten real in your life. And you need God to move. You need him to do something. So be encouraged today. Until you have... Until all you have is God, sometimes you don't know that that's all you needed. And so I encourage you today. I encourage you today. What in your life, what is in your life that it's worth fighting for? And it's gotten real. Your children, your marriage, the desire to be debt free, it's real. It's worth fighting for. What is it? Your healing. So Lord, I come in agreement with your sons and with your daughters this morning. And I thank you, Daddy. I thank you. I thank you. Yeah, you're real. God, I thank you that we don't have to serve Buddha or confusion, confusion, whatever. We don't have to serve Mohammed. We thank you that our God is real and we know it. And we can ask for whatever we have need of. And we can even ask for how we want it. And ultimately, we will say, Lord, we trust you, not our will, but your will be done. So, Lord, I thank you, and we bless your name. We are persuaded by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are real, and we love you, Daddy. God bless you today. I pray that this word fell up on good ground. Share, send up some hearts, send up some smiley faces, share it. Tag people, let people know. You know somebody who needs a word from the Lord to be encouraged because their situation has gotten real and they need to know, what do I do? Because this is real. I need to shut things down, shut people out, turn my face towards the Lord, ask for what I want, wait on God to send the answer, and when he sends the answer, he might turn that situation around and then if you need a sign so that you can have peace and you can be comforted while you wait, ask him. Ask him for how you want it. This, this is the opportunity that we have because we are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. I'm no longer a sinner. I am a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner, but now I have been saved by grace. And I am the righteousness of God. And because of that, I can ask. Hallelujah. If pigs, if a demon can ask to go in pigs, I'm certainly more than some a demon and some pigs. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the Most High God. I can ask. Hey, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And yes, we are. We are, we are, we are, we are blessed. And highly favored in him. Y'all, I got to get off here. We are seven minutes behind time. I love you. Y'all know I love God's word. The God of all comfort. The God of all peace. Yes. Say, tell him who he is, God. Y'all worship him this morning. And just let give him some kisses. Mwah, 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 mwah. I love you, Jesus. Today more than I did on yesterday. God bless you. God bless you. Be encouraged. I pray that this word fell upon good ground and it bring forth mighty, mighty fruit. 40, 60, 100 fold, 1,000 fold. Share it with somebody and uh, just let him know. God will hear their prayers and he will answer. God bless you. Love you.